Welcome to a Triple Helix Robotics instructional video series building a West Coast Drive. In episode 7 we're going to be putting snap ring grooves on the first end of our hex axles. The skills that we'll learn are operating the lathe safely and then cutting the snap ring grooves. So let's get started. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to work on, you guys are going to make us the axles and we're going to do four pieces on the lathe. The pieces we're going to do are this axle, the front axle, well that's the back axle, the front axle, they're going to be the same. You're going to do the center axle that's here, that goes through the gearbox and comes out and that's what this, the center wheel is mounted on. That's going to be made out of Thunder Hex, which is a different kind of hex stock than this one. And then we're going to use, we're going to do this a short little shaft that sticks through the center of the gearbox. It's only about this long. It sets right in here. Um, so we've, we're going to pull the dimensions off the computer and write them down so that you you know how long to cut them. You're going to cut that stock roughly to length. It'll be a little bit longer than what it needs to be. You're going to do that on the chop saw. Then once they're cut oversize, you're going to go into the lathe and you're going to cut snap ring grooves on either end. We're going to start by cutting a snap ring groove on one end and that'll be probably the inside and then we'll mount the axle on the robot in bearings in these plates and then we'll put the wheel on and we'll use a scribe to scratch on the outside where the other um, where the other snap ring groove is going to be and then we'll cut that snap ring groove and then trim off the extra off of the end of the shaft. We've got our stock that we know is long enough. You said, let's see, this is the Thunder Hex piece. This, these are the ones you're going to use for your forward and um, your front and back axles. And this is going to be the one that you use for your short piece. So this, this one has been trimmed so that it's got good ends on both sides. These other pieces have been pulled out of the scrap bin. So the first thing we want to do on these other three is take these to the chop saw and cut off one end to give you a nice good end that you can measure from the lengths to get your final length. Saw! Saw! This is a lathe and what the lathe does is it lets you take a, a piece of stock and chuck it into this chuck and you tighten down the jaws of the chuck with this key that's right here. See how when you turn that it opens and closes and that'll clamp down on the piece that we want to cut. And then there is a motor that's mounted in this housing that we can turn on and when you turn that on this chuck will spin. When it's spinning you can, we can put a cutting tool and this is one example of a cutting tool. It rides on this carriage and the position of the tip of this tool is controlled by these knobs. So this knob for instance will let you move back and forth and if you want to get real fine measurements you can use you can use this knob to do the same thing and you can move it to very precise locations because you have a dial right here that tells you in thousandths of an inch how far you've gone. This knob does the same thing. It moves it in and out. Um, as far as safety goes on this machine, the, there are a couple main hazards. Um, one of them, the biggest one actually, the most common, is that whenever you install your part into this chuck, so you would slide it in like this, you'd turn this chuck key to tighten it up, and let's say we tightened it up right here like this, you always, always, always have to take this chuck key out and set it down or put it in a drawer. Never ever leave the chuck key in the chuck. Because if you leave the chuck key in the chuck and you forget and you turn it on, it will launch this thing out of there. It'll go flying. Uh, hazard number two is from um, if you have long hair or if you have long sleeves. When this is spinning, if 
just for instance, you had long hair that wasn't tied back and you bent over and you were working and your hair swung up here and landed here, it would get caught and that thing would wrap up and it would pull your face and smash it right into that chuck. Some people like wear badges for work that um, your badge could swing and catch on that. They have breakaway badge lanyards for that purpose so that if that would happen, your badge would just break off and not pull your face into, into a tool. Um, those are the two main hazards for this. Now to operate this, before you turn on the machine, you always want to reach over and grab the chuck by hand and rotate it by hand just to make sure that for instance you haven't by accident put this tool up here like this so that when you turn it on the chuck would hit the tool. So you need to rotate this by hand and make sure that it can spin. If it can spin then you know that it's going to be safe to be able to reach over here and turn this switch on. And then you can turn the switch to forward. I'm going to stop this again. So when I do a snap ring groove like this, the first thing that I like to do is I like to, what, what we have to end up with is, is a groove that's located about a sixteenth of an inch in from the end. And then the outer part of the shaft from that groove needs to be round. It can't be pointed like this because if it's pointed, we, it's, the points are big enough that you can't install a snap ring onto it. You have, to, you have to stretch that snap ring open to get over the outside part of the shaft. And if it's turned down round, then it will go on. But if it still has the points on it, it's too big and you can't get it on there. But if it's round, the snap ring will fit on perfectly. That's right. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, we're gonna smooth the outside part of this shaft down so that it's round. And we're gonna do that with a different tool. The way that you change tools on this is you move this lever over and then that releases it and now the tool will come off. Um, these tools are set to a height so that the tip of the tool is exactly lined up with the center of the spinning piece of work and those are set by these knobs that are right here. So let's take this off. Let's take that over here and we're going to get out the tool, this tool, which is the one that lets us smooth off the surfaces. And now I'm just going to move this over and see here how that makes a cut. And I'm going to go in, eh, I'm going to eyeball it about a about an eighth of an inch or so okay and then I can stop this and we can see how what we did see how we took off the outside of those of those flats or of those corners and we made it flat Do that. take off now this time I'm gonna take off 15 another look and we do a lot of starting and stopping of the machine okay now look so in this case I actually went that was I went in 15 so that took off 30 thousandths off the diameter which almost took it too far you can see that on some of these flats they're silver you, we've taken off the anodized the black anodized on the outside and some of them are still black which is good so that's a good place to start for our plunge cut for um, for the snap ring groove. So we have to change tools by taking this one off and we put this one back on again. There we go. There. Can, did you hear that starting to touch? Okay, so I moved it out of the way. Now we're going to set that tool position as our zero. And now what that means is that 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 part now is round and that tool when it touches it's just touching the outside and if we look up here at this picture you can see that this groove depth needs to be at 0 0.016 deep i'm actually going to go a little bit deeper than that i think i'm probably going to go maybe um maybe to 18 or so so there's forward Okay, now we're at our zero right here. You can hear it's just starting to touch. And we're gonna go in nice and slow. There's five, 10, 15, 
16, 17, 18. So I went a little far. And now, see how there's still material coming off of there? Yeah. That's because our lathe is not, the tools aren't super sharp and it's not super duper stiff either. So it pushes on that and that shaft actually flexes out of the way. And as it cuts, it's coming back to its happy place. And I usually wait until that, that the chips are done coming off and then I can back this off again. And now I can turn it off and we can move this out of the way. So now that gives us a snap ring groove right here. When you do this, a lot of times you leave burrs on here. If you feel this with your finger, you'll feel a burr on the outside. Yeah, I do. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that burr with a file by filing a chamfer on it. And what we'll do is we'll turn on the part and let it spin. And then we'll take this and we'll file this away like this while it's spinning. And this is when you need to be careful that you don't file and push your hand right into the chuck. So you gotta be very, very careful. Um, the other thing you always wanna do is you're holding onto the tip of this and you're holding onto the backside and you're doing this. And you don't have to push hard and you don't have to really push, go fast either because the machine is really doing all the work. You're keeping the file parallel to the, to the chuck you're just knocking that, that burr off. Now we can check it. Okay, feel that now. It should be nice and smooth. Yeah, that's a lot smoother than before. Good. You just stick these on here, kind of like that, to get it pushed in tight, and then this, if you squeeze it, it pushes that out. So you can see that we just push it over, and then let go, and then pull it out, and then it's on there.